So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new data lab. In this data lab, we're going to, to do, using Python, we're going to get an element of a visualization. We're going to extract the colors. In this case, it's going to be a flag. And then we're going to use the colors in the entire visualization, right? So I'm going to show you. I have a dem democracy tracker on Mastodon. It plots the democracy status for a new country every day. And as you can see, it uses the colors of the flag to be able to color the visualization. And it's actually a very neat trick, and I'm going to show you how that works in Python. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to need a few libraries. <laughs> so we're going to need PIL, that is the one that allows us to um, extract the colors from the image. We're going to use Urlib that allows us to work with URL images. If you don't have your images, you will not need this library. And then pandas and matplotlib and numpy just to do the work and to plot. Okay? So this is how it works. I have these country flag dot icons and I am getting the icons for a specific country. This is you need a two-digit code. So I'm using for example for Finland to get the color, uh, to get the, the flag. So I'm gonna show you how it looks. So you can so this is the flag for Finland. If you write here US, for example, you will get the flag from the US, right? And these are the flags that I'm showing in there. That's the flag, okay? This is how we're going to do it. This little piece of code, which is what PIL does, it goes and it converts into a web palette, and then you can actually execute each step by itself, and you will see that this gives the RGB colors that are available on the flag, this packs them into a pixel, a pixel for each, and then this, it just counts the colors available and how many times it appears. So as you can see, white appears 1696 times, and then this is another color, this is another color, this is another color. Okay, so I want to have two colors. You might want to have more colors, so you will have to change the code uh, accordingly, but I just want to have two. So what I'm going to do is to convert this output into a data frame. So what this does is it converts the color count, this output, into a data frame. And it sorts by the count, by this number. Here's the thing. I want to have the two most pro prominent colors in the flag. And um, for that, I want to have them ascending. But for this particular image, the first color is a frame that you don't see here, but it exists. So the first color is always to be going to be white, and I don't want it. So I am selecting just, you know, Python starts counting on zero. So I'm selecting from one to four, because I want to have color two and three, okay? And four, we're going to get three colors, two and three and four. So you see them here, two, three, four, good. So if you need more colors, or you need the first color, which you probably would need, you change the one to four accordingly. So the next six steps are as follows. I'm not going to write the code because there's no point. So here's the thing. This step is going to separate the data frame into three columns, R, G, and B, because we are going to manipulate it. Let me start there and I'll show you what the other stuff does. You can see there, so RGB. Now, I want to have, you know, a lot of flags have, for example, Finland flag. It has, let me put it here so you can see it. So it has white and blue. And I cannot use white because if I used white, this is not important, but if I use white in here, white against white, you will not see the number. So I want to make sure that the white is never selected. So let me go back to the US. Uh, so we are going to sort these by, you know, RGB colors, the white color is always 255, 255, 255. So I want to be that the last one. So if I add a total column and I sort by it, so this is going to add a total column. You will see it here, you see? And then always the white is going to be the last one, which is perfect for us. And then I'm going to sort it. So I want to have the white color at the bottom, right? The last color. 
And uh, now that we have that, Matplotli uses predominantly um, hex colors, so we're going to convert this to hex, basically. So we're going to go in there. This is a little function that converts RGB to hex, and then this is basically doing it. Yeah, this is because it's three. I need to get rid of the index uh, column. Index. And I need to say that it's on axis one, otherwise we are going to get in trouble. So that, that means on the columns, right? So now that gives me the hex colors. And once I have the hex colors, I can just print them in Matplotlib. And there you have the three predominant colors for the US flag. Now, let me show you something. If I go back to Finland again, you're going to see that Finland has two colors, it's white and blue, which means that when we're going to get in Matplotlib these two colors, the last color is going to be white, which means that this is going to be white and it's not going to be seen, and I don't want that. So what I want to do is to get a color from the opposite um, side. Let me show you. So the theory of colors is quite fascinating, actually. So if I am here with Finland on this blue, I want to have one on the opposite, but that has the same color harmony, if you would say. <laughs> so to do that, what you actually do is actually very easy. So you go to the color that you want, which is going to be the first row for us, and we're going to subtract 255 of it, and that will give us a complementary color that is called in the design world. So this means the opposite one on the color scale. So, and that will be like quite a nice color to have because it will complement the one that you already have. I mean, it will not be white. So how do we do that? Let me show you. Okay, so first of all, we need our index column back. So then we have our index column. We're going to do like this. I'm going to count the number of colors available in column R. You can count on any column. And this is going to, and if the number of colors is two, like it is for Finland, then I'm going to say, okay, get the index column and split it. Add a new index column, an in this, a new index row. And this is the number of the new index row. And what I'm going to do is for every value on every column, you can see RGB, R, RGB, G, RGB, B, which is at this zero indicates that that's row one, which in Python they start with zero, so it's zero. So it's going to be 255 minus, which is exactly what we wanted to get the complementary color. And then it's going to insert it in the middle. So you'll see here what it does. It goes and it says here, this is the new column that it created. So it's 255 minus zero, 255 minus 52, how neat is it, right? And now that we have these, the only thing that we need to do is to sort and, let me show you, we need to sort and drop the index. So we go back to where we were. The white should be the last one, and then you have the other two, which is the complementary color. Uh, let's do that again. Yeah, that we don't need. There you have it. So now we have this one, the complementary color, and the white. And then I am always going to be sure that I'm not going to get a white. And if there's only one color, I will get complementary color to the one that I have. So it plots nicely with the other stuff. So how amazing is this? It's really, really cool. If you want to check out the democracy tracker, you go to kerbal.social at democracy, and then you can see the charts that are getting plotted every month. I, I can show you here, actually, because I was doing the... Uh, I was doing, if there is only one color, for example, here in Denmark, I was using a darker color, which it worked quite well, but not all the time. You can see here, for Cyprus, so the darker color, this, you, you can't see it when the color is light. So that's why I have decided to do complementary color instead of darker color. So hopefully that will 
fix everything so it can continue plotting without any errors. Cool. Okay, so let me know if you enjoyed the video, let me know which type of videos you would like to see. I will continue to do kind of like data projects in here using Python or whatever we need to do with them. Okay, so see you in the next one. Bye.